On this episode of The Roundtable, brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com and Sam Adams, we learned some really, really interesting things about ayahuasca. Yeah, we got Tony the fucking shaman on this. Yeah, show. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to take you on a ride. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I, th- like, I, I felt like I was in that story. Yeah, I, literally. Like, I was yeah. just thinking how I can apply what he was like saying in like my own way and shit like that. 100%. So it was good. Trayvon. Epic show. Uh, a lot of a lot of shit for people to learn from. For yeah. Sure. I mean, I, this is like really like I mean, like if you struggle with like mental health, depression, stuff like that, like these are these are definitely like r- roots that you can like seek out that I think like help out a lot of people in life. Yeah, we're going to roll the show. It is unbelievable. So stay tuned. Let's go. Mom <laughs> Jr. goes. Right here, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they handcuffed him, took him away, went down, down, you know, got out or whatever. But, I mean, it's crazy because, like, he, I mean, Michael Jr. was a legit badass dude. And he, he owned a, you know, a few junkyards and tow truck company. And then he owned a bar. And they, well, he was at the bar one time. There was a guy that came in. This guy brought this guy in. And he was a karate guy. Okay. And Michael Jr. was behind the bar. And the guy's like, hey, you know, you should, you know, take some karate lessons and so you could you know something happens in here you could defend yourself you could do this you could do that so i'm i'm at the end of the bar you know and i'm sitting down there my dad would always take me in there and you know i've i spent most of my youth in bars with my father yeah. he'd go in there and play cards and shit like that and i'd sit at the end of the bar and end up talking to all the drunk old ladies or whatever yeah, and, yeah. you know they, whatever so but I'm sitting there and I, you know, I don't know what's going on down there. I really don't, you, you know, this is later that they tell me the whole story, but so I, I'm st- sitting there and then Michael Jr. comes out from behind the bar. Well, this guy stands up and, uh, he's like, fucking goes like this and he goes, hi <laughs> And my fucking uncle Jr. goes, bam, and fucking broke his jaw, knocked him out cold. <laughs> And he says, hi ya, that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. So then, but the story is, is that the guy kept saying, hey, you, you need to learn this. And my uncle Jr. said, oh, okay. And he just kept going on what about it. Well, you wouldn't do this. And you should learn how to, you know, defend yourself. So my uncle Jr. said, okay, well, here, I'll come over there. You show me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came around the, the, the bar and the guy standing there and the guy did that. And he fucking knocked, knocked him out. Knocked the fuck out. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the dude, I mean, fucking broke his jaw, shattered. I mean, the guy couldn't talk. I mean, he was fucking bleeding profusely from his face. That's bad for your business if you're a self-defense guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you walk around with your jaw yeah. broke. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's you're talking like, what, the 80s, 1980s or seven, late 70s? That was been, been the 80s. It's funny I is uh, I never fucked. spent a lot of time in bars. My old man didn't drink but would go to the bar to see some of the other truck drivers that he would be around. And one of my earliest memories is him being in a fucking bar fight. Yeah. That this guy was like, they were sharing a, like, this is some fucking hill jack back home <laughs> shit. Was they it were the sh- Legion? Basically. Yeah, it was Legion. at, it was at Joe's bar. Oh, okay. That's a, literally what it's called. And these motherfuckers were, my dad went there. It was like, and it was like during Lent. So they had fish fry. <laughs> it's like some fucking Catholic, like, you know, so we're in there. And we're, I'm eating some fish or whatever, and they're they're jawing back and forth about something about with their truck. They were out there sharing routes or something, and all of a sudden that dude kind of stood up, and he he had been drinking, and I watched my old man just fucking haul off, bang, and hit him, and I and I'm sitting in the fucking booth. So then this dude, I must have been pretty little. This dude behind me that knew my old man grabs me and literally pulls me up over the booth. Like, so I must have been, I don't know, seven, eight years. I was like, Hannon's age probably. Just snatched me up. My old man and them are rolling around the fucking table. They're fucking, and I'm like, I go, <laughs> my mom's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I'm like, that, that was in a fucking bar fight. <laughs> Why he had me, but he don't even drink. Right. So I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, you know what's funny about all this shit? Because like, I, I was, I was actually talking to, me and Carleen and I was having a conversation with her and this was a few months back and I said you know it's it's really fucked up because the things that I found acceptable up until the time I was probably 25 or 26 years old the things that I found acceptable were crazy like I, I mean I remember walking down the street and dudes getting jumped I remember getting jumped I remember 
you know, uh, you know, Saturday mornings I'd be sitting there eating cereal and there'd be two women in the front yard, one of them be in her underwear and the other one be fully dressed <laughs> fighting because they caught her at the, at the neighbor's house. And yeah, it, but that was normal. But That's was, what you're saying. But it was like, that was my normal. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, it's so crazy. So I, I, you know, it's just like all this shit that I'm like, and now, you know, I'm older and I'm like, why is it there fucking cameras everywhere? And what, <laughs> yeah. You know, and all the dirt I did and all the wrong shit I did, I'm sitting here, you know. That person's speeding down your yeah. road. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? There's always the old guy. It's like, you better yeah. slow down. Yeah. And I'm like, That's now, Tony. These guys are, you know, I don't really care about my yard much. You could tell how your dog could shit in it or do whatever. Because I've always told myself when I was younger, don't be that guy. But, you know, but. I also, I, you know, it's so weird, man, because I, I look at life way differently than I used to when I was younger. Perfect segue. We good? We on? Yeah. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We got West Side Legend, Tony Ramos in the motherfucking house today. And normally we're talking about squatting. Normally we're <laughs> talking today. about yeah. maybe strippers staying in your car. Whenever you're speed squatting on Sundays at West Side. Normally talk about that. But Tony had a crazy experience that me and him uh, talked about on the uh, phone the other day about going to try some psychedelics, ayahuasca. And he was like, I'll tell that shit on the podcast. I said, well, motherfucker, let's, I'm going to text your ass and make it happen. Trey's had some uh, psychedelic experience. I don't know about are, you two are, guys. Are we going to go straight into the... I think straight into it. Yeah, I think so, because we've done so many lifting podcasts. I think we go straight into (laughs) why and all. But go ahead. Yeah, I I just want to say, you know, it seems like the ayahuasca trend is pretty big for sure. And it's a huge deal with Aaron Rodgers. Okay, you know, watching him. It seems that uh, maybe were you inspired by Aaron Rodgers going into an ayahuasca? Uh, so I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> set it up, Tony. <laughs> so here, I, I can tell you. So like just to preface this, like yeah, I'm not like promoting it, you know, anything yeah. or whatever. But like you know, we'll do a like, disclaimer. Some, the Roundtable yeah. podcast is not promoting ayahuasca, <laughs> yeah, but well, maybe just, you should try. Maybe not. It's brought to you by Max Over Muscle, good. Sam Adams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You want to fucking heal yeah. yourself. Go. I, I say if you're if you're going there and you think it, you're going there to do a drug, then don't go. But if you think you're going there to heal something or fix something within you, then do it. But I got to preface this. So yep. the reality of it is, is that you know since I was a little kid, since I was nine years old, there has not been. I mean, there might be a few days, but there's probably not been a day that I haven't thought about killing myself. Wow. And I don't know why this is. I mean, it's just, you First know. First off, that's a crazy, honest thing to just throw it's, out there. It's a, it's it. a reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the reality of it is, I mean, I, I tell people this, you know, to God's honest truth. I mean, I've attempted suicide three times in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, one time I succeeded, but they brought me back. Um, you know, so, you know, I've always had this thing, it, it, you know, and people are always like, well, how the fuck did you, you know, like you did, see, all, every, did it always just kind of feel like it was there. Yeah. Like, so it. people would, people would say to me, bro, you know, you, oh, you guys look at me and like, and everybody's like, this is a bad motherfucker right yeah. here. We ain't nothing going to face him. Well, shit don't really phase me. It's just, the thought just comes in. I got it. It doesn't go, you know, it just comes in. You can't control it. So my whole life I have battled depression. I battled it on, on, on all kinds of levels, and I really didn't understand how to deal with it. So for me, it, a lot of my depression, I would hide it through anger and hide it through trying to be a badass or, you know, like you fucking, you, you know, I, I, I tell people like, you know, I got all this depression, but, you know, if I, if I fucking just go ahead and pile a bunch of anger on top of it and badass motherfucker shit, then, you know, I can, I can kind of stifle it and keep it down, you know? So here's, it's crazy, man, like too. And, you know, I got to say this because, you know, something had happened. So, you know, this was, uh, I think 2009, 2010. Um, it was 2000. I think it was 2009. But, you know, uh, George Halbert was living with me at the time. And, you know, I was training at West Side and everything. And everything's great. One of the greatest bench pressers of all time. Yeah, I, I believe he's probably the, is the, the greatest. The greatest. We'll, we'll go ahead with that. Right. So... <laughs> He's living with me. I'm going through a divorce. I'm losing everything. You know, the housing market crash. I own all these properties. I'm losing the stuff. I'm going through a divorce. Um, you know, 
I'm, I'm doing all these things. Like, you know, like it's, it's just everything, man. I'm, you know, I'm just losing everything. So, um, we go out one day and it, it's crazy because I don't know the lead singer that ended up killing himself. Um, Lincoln Park. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. everybody talks about man, Chester. He was great. That dude was so happy that day and everything was cool. We had a normal day. Everything was good. We, you know, we all went out. We was all hanging out. You know, here's what's nuts. Nobody, you know, this is the reality of it is, is that I woke up that morning and knew what I was going to do. Mm. I knew that when I had the opportunity, I was done. And so no matter how the day went. Yeah, it didn't matter. Like okay. what was going on? I woke up and I was like, well, I, I'm tired of dealing with this right now. This 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 weight that's on top of me, it's fucking beating me down. And you feel like, man, you, you feel like you got this heavy ass blanket on top of you. And it's like you're getting strangled and you're like, how do I, you know, it's like it's like being in this moment where you're like, I want to fucking run, but you don't know where to run to. Yeah. So I'm going through this whole thing all day long, but nobody can see it. Everybody's like, oh, fuck, he's cool. You know, all this stuff's going on. My life really isn't that bad. I mean, it's, you know, it's stuff I could have worked through or whatever, but I was just done, you know? So we go through the whole day, and, you know, so George, um, we're coming home, and he's talking to some girl or whatever, and he was like, hey, man, are you all right? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. You know, and I was like, cool, man, just go, go see her. He leaves the next day. And I don't know, it was a day or two later. I don't know what it was, but that night I ended up, I mean, I took, I don't know how many, when my brother found me, I think I had two beats per minute is, is what happened. Cause my brother had been trying to um, get a hold of me and I wasn't answering my phone or nothing like that. And then he came over, they had, you know, he basically had to kick the door in or whatever and, so, um, they found me and, and then I woke up and I don't know if it was the next day or the next night, but you know, I woke up and George is there and my brother, Laura Phelps is there. And you know, the reason I'm saying this man is because, you know, like my appreciation for those kind of friends, man, for and sure. Shane Sweat was there too, you know, mm -hmm. and those, you know, but I, I mean, I remember waking up, man, and then two of the most important people in my life, um, at that time and and right now i mean you know i don't talk to laura as much but or you know or george and laura i love them to death like those pe two people are they've just, been staples the whole time yeah the really <clears throat> great people man have you know always been true friends to me but like i said man like everybody talks about depression and says oh well it's you know it's this you know what, what's bothering you what's this i will tell you like dr oz is one of the reasons i deal with depression so well because I came home one day and I was cooking some eggs and I turned the TV on and it was on channel six or whatever, whatever channel he's on. I wouldn't fucking watch Dr. Oz. Like I'm like I'm fucking quack, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But I'm cooking some eggs at the table and I hear him say, next we're going to talk about how to deal with depression and, you know, best ways to deal with it. And the thing he did was I was like, oh, so I fucked cooked my eggs. I went in there, I sat down, I listened to it. And, and the only thing I remember taking from it was he said, they said, when you wake up in the morning, get out of bed. Don't lay there. Because if you keep laying in bed, that, that depression, you know, it just starts coming and it gets worse. And then the blankets feel heavier. And then you're like, fuck it, I'm not getting out of bed. So I, I dealt with that a lot, man. And I didn't realize what was going on. I would just lay there and it would feel like my fucking feet would get heavy and then my legs would get heavy and then I'd just be there and then I'd be like, fuck it. And I'd just roll over and lay in the bed and not get up and just wallow in this shit that was just raining down on me that I couldn't even, I couldn't handle. So, <clears throat> but like, I, you know, I mean, so it was a really good thing. And that's why like in the mornings now, I just jump out of bed, get my shit, get dressed and leave. You know, when I first got with Carlene, it was the hardest thing in the world for her to understand, mm -hmm. you know, because like I'd jump up and get dressed and she'd be like, okay. And I'd be like, see you, bye. Love you, bye. You know, just yeah. leave. Got to get it moving. I got to get moving because as soon as I start moving, everything goes away. Now, here's the reality of it is didn't, a day didn't go by I wouldn't, that I wouldn't at some point think about offing myself. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because you're driving. 
nothing's going on, nothing bad's happening, day isn't horrible, and then all of a sudden, I mean, there's times I've got just got paid three hundred thousand dollars for a job and have you know all this money in the bank, and I'm I'm like everything's great, and I'm like, uh, man, I could just off myself, and people. It's funny because people say, well, man, you take the easy way out. Well, people don't understand. I'll do this. I'll tell you what, Corey. I'm going to give you a gun, and I'm going to put a gun to your kid's head, and I'm going to say the easiest way out of this is for you to kill yourself if you want your kid to live. Mm -hmm. How easy is that? Yeah. People say it's easy, <clears throat> and what people don't understand is <clears throat> at that moment, this is what's fucking nuts. At that moment, when I gave in and said, all right, I'm done, I felt relaxed and was like, it's over. Fucking thank God. And it's the weirdest thing. You just feel totally relaxed and calm and cool, and you're like, it's over. I ain't got to deal with it anymore mm -hmm. at that moment. So people, you know, people really don't understand depression the way they say they do. You know, yeah. they, they, you know, they, you know, it's this, it's that. And I'm sure other people have other levels of depression. For sure. You know, sure. I'm sure, you know, they have, you know, some people have depression because they have, you know, fucked up lives or, you know, they're in a bad relationship or something bad's going on in life. They got money problems or whatever. None of mine was, it, it, no matter what, it was a constant. Yeah. It's been a constant. And the fucking drugs they give you, man, they're horrible. I mean, dude, I've been on so many drugs and you take them and it fucking turned me into a zombie. And I would just sit there and I just feel like, and you know, and then all I would feel like is the back of my brain was, was a sponge. And I was like, you know, you know, I'm not who I am. Cause I'm a pretty like fucking out there, go get it, for you know? Sure. And I'm just like, oh, this isn't working for me. So yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, you know, so I wanted to preface this whole thing about. But this is what you had been dealing with, which is why you were interested in trying to. Right, well, yeah, that's part, that's part of it, you know. Uh, God love Joe Rogan, man. I mean, he's talking about, you know, DMT and doing this and doing that. And, you know, I, I listened to some shit he said. And, you know, it's like, you know, he did a podcast with Ron White, too, that I watched that I was like, oh, man, this is fucking really, you know. This is really cool. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, I started researching it, you know, and to be honest with you, like I, I tried DMT first mm -hmm. because, you know, I thought, okay, you know, cause people say you do it and sometimes it just clicks and it immediately changes you and helps you or whatever. It was okay for me, man, but it just wasn't, it wasn't what they thought it or what I thought it should be. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I said, I feel like I need to go deeper into the <clears throat> ayahuasca thing. And um, I feel like I'm fucking talking forever here. <laughs> That's, That's why good. we brought you. Anybody yeah. got anything at this point? Well, I, no. what, what, can you break down like what the fuck is ayahuasca? Like I don't mean is it a so I, I, I mean to be honest with you, out of a bowl? <laughs> like, what the fuck's so, going on? I'm like GTS that shit, but uh, Google it. I, I mean, what it is is the root of a tree, and they make a tea with it. It's like a plant. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, the plant, and they make a tea with it, and it's been around in Peru forever, forever and. Yeah. You know, all these tribes and shit have done it, you know, go on spiritual journeys and stuff. And, you know, when I was younger, man, too, it was like really crazy because I, you know, been in concrete most of my life in construction. And my dad had some uh, actual, you know, Native Native Americans that worked for him. And these guys were like, uh, I mean, I mean, real life, like, you know, from the reservation, man. And I remember when I was, you know, probably, you know, 18, 19 years old. I remember having conversations with them about it, you know, and they were talking about doing peyote and stuff like that. And they were talking about spiritual journeys and how they, you know, how they picked a path in their life of how they wanted to go and things like that. And here, so you guys all need to know this about me too, man. Like I didn't, I've, I've never really did drugs my whole life. I never touched a drug. I smoked weed twice up until the time I was, 29 30 years old wow. that was it now i've been around drugs <laughs> yeah, life, yeah every drug there <laughs> is but uh but yeah it wasn't a thing and to be honest with you i didn't even touch a hallucinogen uh which was shrooms uh until i was 51 years old wow you how, know how old are you now i'm 52 now so yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, recent. Just, it's just recent that this thing has come on and when i took it and i and the you know, I'll be honest with you, I was watching, the, I went to a Tool concert with my brother and fucking did it. And 
Um, it was a fucking. I was like, why the fuck have I not taken this during concerts? Because <laughs> I it, know Trey's gonna speak soon. Because <laughs> then I under, then I understood it. Like yeah. I got it. Like I wasn't a Tool fan. I, you know, I, 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 I you know, in here, yeah. in, in, you know, but like, you are now. Yeah. So yeah, and that, that was the thing. It's like uh, you're like now I know what Pink Floyd's gonna get to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, you know, yep. and that's the thing. It's like. Uh, it was really weird. I would have never done it. And we have a suite at Nationwide Arena. So, you know, I probably shouldn't say their name, but yeah, yeah you're good. <laughs> um, but, you know, and it's basically your own room. You could do, you know, whatever. And, you know, that was the first time I ever tried it was down there. And it, it's crazy because um, I just got it. I was like, fuck, man. I didn't under, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of Tool. I wasn't, you know, I mean, it, it just wasn't me and then that happened and i was like holy shit there's something to this and i'll tell you this years earlier probably in my late 30s i tried shrooms with george mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. and we fucking ate them and he ate them and um i shouldn't be telling his story but <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh, anyways we tried them back then yeah. and george tried it's a long time ago yeah george <laughs> tried it and uh, <laughs> And he was like happy as fuck. Everything was great. And yeah. I'm like, I feel nothing. And he's laughing the whole time at me. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, <laughs> like I want to punch so you. So it didn't, it didn't, it didn't yeah, do anything, anything to me. So I was like, man, what is the use in this stuff? And it's like really nothing you know, yeah. to it. But then that happened. And I was like, whoa, was there's, like, something, there's different. something different to it. <laughs> so, yeah. Trayvon, would you like to add something currently? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just like, Please. yeah, like preface, like I think like one of the, like Tony was saying, like one of the most important things like when doing like any sort of like psychedelic or hallucinogen is just like the timing and like the actual like meaning that you want to get out of it. Like meaning like this is like, that's like what you're going into it for. And like, that's like your whole objective with it. Like, it's not like some sort of, it's not like, like they're not like things in my opinion that should be like a recreational like use in a sense. Like it should be something that you're going into like with the mindset that that's what you want to take out of it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. there's a goal. Yeah. yeah, you better have a goal. Don't do that shit sitting at home or think you're gonna, you know, because it's really not. It's gonna end up just. Yeah, and, and that's it, and that's like it, when it that's like when it f like really actually like fucks people up though too, right. because like you've heard stories of like people that actually like go crazy and stuff like that. Like mo most like psychedelics or halluc or hallucinogens, you like can't actually like overdose on like from a okay. physical standpoint but they can make you do crazy things though and that's where a lot of like the stuff happens so like got it you know like being careful and taking them in the right settings and all that that's like a big factor on what makes people like go crazy when they do do them fuck isis if i smoked well, weed it had like a red hair in it like some kind buds i'd yeah. feel like that so shit i ain't never messing with nothing bro right i'd be but like I'm saying, wait a second i'm a fucking cartoon right now like what's happening I'm like no, I mean, I'd, so i'd be really fucked up on this shit no, yeah. i'll tell you right now i mean if they ever told me like look you got six months to live i'm motherfucker i'm trying every drug <laughs> <laughs> when I'm an old, I, I'm serious. When yeah. I'm an old man, I mean, I one of my grandkids or something is like, all right, cramps, I'm gonna hook you up. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna say, okay, this made me feel this way. This made me feel this way. And this, di I mean, I, yeah. Because now I'm just like, okay, you know, I'm not willing to do that shit and go. You know, it's not like a, I don't fucking party like I used to. I don't. Yeah. I man, I I can't remember the last time I drank. I mean, I yeah. don't really drink anymore. So, I mean, it's. It's one of those things that, you know, I, I kind of got to see what it was. And then some of the things that, you know, I researched, like I said, you yeah. know, Joe Rogan's podcast and there's some other podcasts on, on ayahuasca and things like that. And, you know, so I decided that, uh, and to be honest with you, I'm fucking skeptical about everything because, yeah. you know, no, when they say, you know, that they're like, oh, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. And you're going to go there and blah 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 and you know you know this and that and the reason i did it is because yeah. i have somebody you know i, I went and did it with a friend and i, I did it more so f for him mm -hmm. and because i thought well okay man maybe you know because i thought in my head maybe something you know did i had the shrooms give you like a little look at it is that what kind no, of made you more? No, what, so what, no. So honestly, what gave me a look at it, and I haven't, I've only done it once, but it gave me a look at it. 
was uh, LSD. Okay. Yeah. So I did acid, and this was. I'm scared of doing acid. Right. I'm just no, gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna say it. I'm scared well, of all. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little I, pussy I mean, over like, here. Listen, yeah, like you shouldn't, <laughs> like you shouldn't do it. You know, be, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> if it's that's that's what I that's what I did like a whole bunch. I've done the most I've done. I've done ten tabs at one time before. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Because I did <laughs> one. <laughs> and it, and maybe it's, it's maybe it's Trey one. fucking the air. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, well, like, it's like, with a lot of this stuff, like you're actually being, you know, guided through this from somebody, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 so, well, so, Trey was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody should help you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So someone so, should be. So I I did I did the LSD thing, and then here's here's one of the other reasons why I. I thought, well, holy shit, maybe this will help me, you know, open my brain up. See, what people, a lot of people do, man, and, and, and here's what's crazy. You could get in a car crash, right, and flip ten times, and your brain is still awake. Your eyes are still wide open. It's a violent thing that's going on with you, and your brain erases that memory. doesn't erase it, but it locks it so you can't yeah. get to it because you couldn't deal with that trauma. So I did LSD at home one night and i'm like sitting there and it hits me and i'm like oh shit and it's like weird shit like you know like things are doing this and whatever and for me psychedelics aren't me i'm not trying to see a lot of uh, the visuals are cool whatever but you know that's not really what's going on inside my head i fucking close my eyes and it takes me back to when i was a kid oh wow and we were homeless and I, I haven't had those memories, and I blocked them all the fuck out. So I close my eyes, and I'm like, and then I, I'm like, fucking wake up, and I'm like, fuck, fuck, dude. And all I remember was we were parked. It was a, we had a, a, a cutlass. I remember the car. We were parked in a parking lot. It was like a gravel pit area, or it was a coal mine. I can't remember what it was, but it had all the conveyor belts and everything. And, you know, it had the lo like the little shack there and we were parked basically under a light and I had to get out and I had to go take a pee. And I took a pee and I walked back to the car and I just remember walking back to the car and I remember, you know, exactly that visual of me walking back to the car and the car running, the smoke coming out of it. It was the middle of winter. There's pillows and everything all blocked up in the car. And I'm, I'm like, this is going through my head, and every time I close my eyes, I'm like, what the fuck? And, he, and I feel like I keep feeling like I'm in the 70s. Like, it takes yeah. me back to like the kid. Like, like, actually being there. Like, actually being there, and I'm like, fuck, man. I'm like, and I start getting really uncomfortable, and I'm like, why is this happening? And I remember, like, um, I still remember places we lived, and, uh, you know, we had that fucking, like, velvet uh, – wallpaper with the designs on it mm -hmm. and shit and i remember seeing that I, I and i i it's crazy because i moved a lot when i was little we, we were always constantly moving so i all this shit was going on and i really couldn't understand what was going on because first off i'm like seeing shit and then this is happening and i mean it was the first time i ever got lost in my own house <laughs> <laughs> because all the lights were off basically and you're like and dude the visuals you can't really see it was crazy like so um the next day i wake up and i'm like okay what the fuck so i'm sitting there and i'm like i start to like compartmentalize all this and what's going on and i'm like holy shit so, growing up in my 20s, 30s, 40s, way better now, I couldn't sleep at home. It was so hard for me to go to sleep at home. It was so hard for me to get good rest at home. And I never understood why, but going through that, oh, I yeah. understand it because then I started realizing, holy shit, if I came to your house and went to sleep, sleep fine. If I went to a hotel, fucking sleep like a baby you know go other places sleep easy as fuck but at my own house couldn't sleep so weird couldn't understand it but i understand it now been kicked out of so many houses people yeah. telling you to move you know getting up in the middle of the night loading up trash didn't bags have a stable i didn't situation. have a stable house so if it was my house i'm afraid i can't sleep because i'm gonna get kicked out of here how am i gonna do this and i really was like holy shit and i realized it and i and it helped me so much that I was like, wow, 
and like I could breathe and then it, I'm more relaxed at home now and, mm. and feel like I bo- it's really crazy because I never I could tell you I owned a house and didn't feel like I owned the house and it was mine I never felt that way I always felt like I was in somebody else's place interesting and it was the craziest fucking thing in the world but I, I don't feel that way now I mean you know like I, here, here's what's crazy I own rent, a bunch of rental properties and commercial properties I don't fucking own my own house I yeah. rent a house. I well, and I always knew that about you. I never really asked, but you would you would mention that, and I'm like, and, but I didn't. Know but what, I've been to your commercial building. I've been to you own all this other equipment. I'm like, why is Tony not owning that? But I never really asked you. But but I didn't know why. <laughs> yeah. Well, here it goes. I didn't. I really didn't know why. I because I didn't want to. I mean, you could go buy a house and fucking <laughs> yeah. eat, and I didn't want to. And I'm getting ready to uh, close on a house now. But it's the weirdest shit. It's like, it's like I couldn't. I did not feel comfortable with those houses. So, like I said, the LSD trip took me and, and me closing my eyes like that, and I, it unlocked something in my brain, and I really uh, dealt with that being homeless and not having a place to live and, and, and not being in a stable home. And I think it caused a lot of problems in relationships too because, you know, I would, you know, after I got a divorce, I would live with girls and things like this or whatever, and... I couldn't feel stable in their house because I felt like I was always going to get kicked out. So I probably did some things that I and acted some ways I shouldn't have acted. It's re- it's crazy, man. Like the the dots are connecting. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like holy shit. Like oh man, I was really fucked up. Oh, I did that. Why why would I do that? Why could I sleep? And man, I could tell you right now. Like <laughs> I remember he just got up town on powerlifting meets and be like. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> and sleep for fucking hours and have no problem doing it. Yeah. But then you know you come and um, you come back home and you're like, uh, and you feel like just nervous and it's crazy because you feel fucked up in your own house. So that opened it up, Tony, to think what else is in there. Is right. that really where? Right. So that's what you know made me start thinking. Well, maybe this stuff has a place. Maybe you know it's it's real. So, you know, I started researching it and stuff like that. And then, you know, I was like, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. And like, you know, the thing of it is, is like, I, you know, I was like, okay. So I told my buddy, I was like, look, man, if you want to go, I'll pay for it. And then, you know, I I told Carlene, do you want to go? I'll pay for it. You know, if we're going to do this, we'll just go do it. So we, uh, we fucking found a place and it's like a native American place and, uh, um, Kentucky. I don't know. I signed an NDA. They don't, I mean, whatever. Just don't say what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So, but fucking great, great place. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, we, we, uh, we find it, we scheduled everything. We go down there and, um, you know, I got, hold on, I got to say this. So I watched the Ron White thing on joe rogan okay. and i'm like and i'm like okay i'm like holy fuck dude like am i gonna puke shit myself all this stuff i'm like wait you're talking about ron white the comedian right? yes yeah yeah okay, okay. Yeah. and but like, i'm not you know, familiar but i'll watch but it he yeah. Said, yeah. but he yeah. said you know players. he said he quit drinking from it it helped him you know there's a lot of shit that you deal with and he was really good at explaining and i was okay. like okay and joe rogan's really good at explaining shit too you know so i, I was kind of like all right this fucking you know i trust him <laughs> so, thanks joe yeah. <laughs> so um so we find a place so here's the deal you got to go down there you have to get down there before four o'clock on a friday and so we we left and we went down there and we got there before four o'clock and um and you go in and what it is it's a room probably a little bit bigger than this mm-hmm. and what they have is cubbies and there's like walls there and then they got six cots and those six cots also have six um uh anti-gravity like lawn chairs okay okay so you go there you get your bed made and everything get yourself ready and then you go out and there's another room on the other side that everybody sets in and they go through and they talk to you about it and they say hey listen the first night here's what we're going to do we're going to give you a half cup and then wait 15 minutes give you another half cup and then you know to make sure you don't have any adverse reactions so and and here's the thing, man. These, these 
I, this is my mentality when it was going on. I'm like, these motherfuckers talking about. <laughs> they're, they're Tell like, us, Sony. They're, they're, they're like, Mother Ayahuasca, she's going to give you what you need, not what you want. She's going to take you on this path. You're the and, ultimate skeptic at this journey. point. <laughs> I can already see it. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you, you motherfuckers are like sitting here talking about some like like crazy <laughs> shit. So, yeah. no, I'm like, yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. mother, a, a mother A. And they're just saying this stuff. And I'm just like, okay. So we all take it. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what I'm, like, I'm, yeah. like, I'm, like, I'm like, there's a fucking drug. Yeah. I'm about to get high and see some shit. Because the room you're in, it's, it's a dark room, and it's got, like, stuff on the walls for visuals, black lights and stuff. But uh, so, you know, we... Take my cup, drink the half cup, wait, drink another half cup. What's it taste like? Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was, I was really <laughs> just past that. Does it taste like, like asshole yeah. or like? Dude, it fucking tastes bad. <laughs> yeah. And my buddy was like, well, it tastes pretty good. And I'm like, fuck you, man. It was it was bad. And Carlene thought it tasted bad, too. It was fucking. What does it smell like? Does it smell like? I can't it, smell it, anything oh, at okay. all. So it doesn't, you know. Gotcha. I can't. I, you, you could shit in my face, and I. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna imagine what is that? Like piss. Yeah. So yeah. it's bad, but so we take it, and they're like, "Listen, go back there. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. You're gonna do whatever." So I go back there, and I basically I fucking fall asleep, and I wake up, and I feel like I'm gone for like six hours, and I'm like, wake up, and I'm kind of like, okay. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like how you feel on shrooms and acid combined, I guess. It's kind of like weird. Like you got a kind of a body buzz. And the whole time I'm smiling. I'm like, this hey, is, Trey might know what you're talking this about. Is, I don't know. This is cool. Like you get this body buzz and you're kind of yeah. like floaty and you're like, ah, oh. but I didn't see any visuals or none of that shit. So I got up and I went back out. I was like, hey, you know, can I get some food? And they're like, yeah. And they gave me some Doritos. And I ate some Doritos. And because I was like, man, I really don't feel it. Well, because, you know, I've had pancreatitis and stuff. And they say that your uh, gallbladder and shit can block it from working. Mm. So they give you a little bit of food. And it makes it work better. So I, I ate the Doritos. I go back. I lay down. And uh, I'm like, okay. And then, I don't know. I closed my eyes, fell asleep. And then I... I remember waking up at one point like, oh, shit. And I remember looking around. I seen some visuals, but it wasn't that great. And I was like, I was just like laughing. And it was like, you know, just <laughs> laughing. It was just happy laughing. I didn't see nothing. Didn't go on no fucking journey or nothing. Yeah. So it's over. It, it, it only lasts like a couple hours, maybe the first night, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. But you feel like it's six or seven hours. So we all go back out front. These motherfuckers are like, oh my God, I was in this thing and she was showing me this and she walked to me over here and showed me this and showed me that. <laughs> well, there was a guy there that had been there before, so they gave him three full cups the first night. So I'm sitting there and like, you know, he's fucking, he starts puking and I'm like, okay. And I'm waiting to puke. I don't puke. I'm like, Pew. Okay, well, they, what are, you're thinking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew it. Uh, there's the I'm power thinking, lifting, Tony. Going on? I'm just saying it. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> like, oh, I got this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck it, I got it. So I'm like, fucking, you know, all this is, you know, uh, fucking whatever. This fucking and, guy? Yeah, and I'm like, he's over here fucking puking. And then, you know, and, and then, like, you know, then there was another person next to me, and they were breathing real heavy like they was trying to catch her breath. And I'm like, okay, this shit ain't doing what they say. But then we go out, and we're all talking. And everybody, even my friend, you know, Car was like, oh, I saw myself playing as a little girl on the TV screen. And I'm like, I'm rolling my eyes, and I'm thinking, okay, just – just go along with them. Yeah. Just play along. Don't be the fucking asshole. Don't be the dickhead. Yeah. Don't be. Yeah. I didn't want to be fucking. Yeah. I didn't want to be the fucking the the asshole. In the ayahuasca room. Grinch. Yeah. 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 I didn't want to be that guy. So I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. So they're all telling their stories. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, I just slept. And Carlene pretty much slept the first night too. But we just both slept. And they kept telling you, she's going to give you what you need, not what you want. So I'll be honest with you, man. Okay. Like, I love my father to death, and I love my mom to death. But, you know, I didn't have the greatest childhood. And my dad, you know, he's he's battled some 
you know, he, I think he still does alcoholism. You know, he, he thinks he's got it under control. But so I thought, man, I'm, you know, there's a lot of things that I do in my life that, you know, you know, I played sports because I wanted to impress my father. I did all these things and wanted him to always be proud of me. So I thought, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to fix this in my head. So anyways, we get through the first night. We get up at 7 the next morning. We go, you can leave. And so we go downtown and we get some lunch. And then you got to be back by 2 o'clock. So um, you come back. Uh, we go eat and we go to this park. It's up in the mountains and it's got this huge-ass lake on it. And it's really fucking beautiful. And we're there for like, I don't know, three, four hours. And they're all talking. And they're telling their story. And I can't wait to see what she takes me to tonight. This and that. And I'm like. You're like, this shit is cute. And I'm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, look, motherfucker. I'm, I'm about to get blasted off tonight. I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. let's go. Like, that's what I thought in my head. So <laughs> we go back. Two o'clock. Everybody gets there. So they go through the whole spoon. And they're like, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put you in here. We're going to. um you know, we're going to give you, you know, we're going to give you a full cup. Then you can go back and sit in a room for 15 minutes and come back out. And we're going to give you another full cup. So I was like, okay. Well, I start to get a little bit nervous because I'm like, fuck, man. I do not want to be the guy that fucks everybody's trip up and flip out and, you know, do all this bad shit or whatever. Because, you know, if you watch the Ron White interview, he talks about, you know, some woman freaking out and they have to hold her down and shit. And I'm like, man, fuck. And I'm thinking to myself, man, don't be that guy. Yeah. You know, two I, cups might get me there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm starting to get a little bit fucking nervous. But then I'm like, OK, cool. I was like, fuck it. So I take the first cup and I go back and I sit there for 15 minutes. And, you know, I come back in and they give me the next cup. And I'm like, fuck it. Let's go. And I just fucking down it. And I'm like, and it, it's, <laughs> it's got some of the shit left in the bottom of it. And I pour some water in it. And fucking get the rest. Get of it all. It. Yeah. I like no creatine yeah, on right. the side. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I got it all out. <laughs> right. So I fucking get it out. And I'm like, drink it. And I'm like, okay. So I start to fill it a little bit. So I go back. So here's the deal, too. It's like when you take it, you have to carry a puke bucket with you. Yeah. Everybody carries. The, you get a puke bucket. A, and there are these plastic little bucket things that you got to carry with you. The first night I had to have it, you have to keep it with you, you know. I kind of felt like I might puke the first night, but it never came. And, you know, they was like, look, don't fart because you will sh you might shit yourself Shack. if you fart. Yeah. <laughs> don't but, trust the fart. But here's what's, here's what's crazy. I'm, laying there. The fart, I'm, yeah. I'm laying there and I'm like. <laughs> Here it is. So I fart. <laughs> And I'm like, I didn't shit myself, so I'm okay. So I think, <laughs> I think I'm immune to a few of these things. <laughs> okay. Tony, Tony's where this checking is going. himself. He's checking yeah. Himself. He's like, oh, so you're like, I've had briefs so on good. and had yeah. to fart. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll be so good. I'm good. I'm good. But anyway, so I'm there and I'm like, <laughs> fucking, you know, we. I take the two cups and they go back and I sit in the chair. Well, I'm sitting in a chair and and here's what I see. I I see my daughter. I'm in space floating, but I'm like, I am here. And I see my daughter, and she's like on a space shuttle or something. And I'm outside of it looking through the windows, and she's inside in like an astronaut outfit. And she's fucking flipping switches and working buttons and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm there, and it seems like you're there for a long time, but you're really not. Mm -hmm. So that happens, and then I kind of just go, I don't know where, and I think I probably just fell asleep. So I'll, I'm like this, and then, you know, I wake up, and I see a car walk out the door, and I'm like, oh, it's over. And that, and here's the thing. Afterwards, after you do the Saturday, they give you uh, vegetarian pizza. So, um, and so I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm hungry. Yeah. So I go out there, and I think that I've been, I think that I've been out there for, you know, I think I've been gone for like, four or five hours i'm thinking pizza's here so i go out there and there's no pizza and i'm like okay um i'm sitting there and the car's there and i'm like she's not really feeling it i feel like it's kind of over with so i'm like hey can i get some food and they're like are you sure she's like let me give you a few minutes i'm like okay and i'm thinking I've, i'm thinking, You're thinking over. the ride's over this is fucking over dude like it's done <laughs> so i'm like okay so i'm sitting there and then next thing i know they take Carlene back, um, and you know I had a really deep. My buddy was out there, and so I had a really deep conversation with him. 
and and it was it, it was pr- it was a really good conversation that I was having with him and uh he was going through some shit and he 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 said he's like man i figured a lot of shit out i'm like cool and i'm like well i think it's over he's like no it ain't over and i'm like okay so they give me some doritos so i fucking eat these doritos and i'm sitting there and then all of a sudden i feel like i feel like my like the back of my like like my skin on my skull was getting like lifted i was like I went, I fucking felt the back of my head like, what the fuck, man? So I'm like, okay, I better go back in here. So I go back in there and I sat in the anti gravity chair and um, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm like, just fucking cool. Like, dude, I'm the, it's the most comfortable way I think I felt. I was sleeping. I was just relaxed. I remember floating like kind of in space or whatever. Can't remember a whole lot about it. So, motherfucking shit got real quick. So, I'm sitting there, and next thing I know, I'm laid back like this in the chair. And I feel like something goes, wham, and grabs me and fucking yanks me up. And I set up like this. And I fucking come up like this, and I'm like, fucking, I mean, the loudest fucking heaves you could ever fucking have in your life i mean it was excruciating and like violent and i mean it was so fucking violent i'm like fucking and i mean it's so loud and all i'm thinking is this fuck i'm running everybody's time yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like what the fuck so i'll tell you this i'm fucking dry heaving and i fucking shit myself (laughs) and i'm like Fuck, and I, I, the first thought in my head was Rod White, like, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I should have I wore a fucking diaper. <laughs> so I, I'm freaking out, and I'm like, fucking shit. And, like, dude, it's violent. Like, I feel like shit running down on my body right now and just Damn. fucking, I mean, it's raining down on me. And it, it and I'm like, holy shit, and all, all this Literally stuff, a shit storm hitting it's you. It's fucking, yeah. yes. And it's fucking, and I'm like, whoa, and and. And it was it was loud as fuck. So I know that I'm holding this fucking puke thing in my hands. I know I'm holding it. But what I see is my fucking arms straight out like this and black smoke leaving my body. And I'm like, what? fuck, what the fuck? And the, the lady who's there and she's the shaman who's helping she comes over and she just, she, I mean, dude, she, and it was crazy. She walks through the smoke and she comes <laughs> over and I'm like, fuck. And she sets down. And she's like, let it go. Just breathe. Let it go. And I'm like, I fucking shit myself. <laughs> fucking, I, you know, and all this yeah. shit's going on. And then it's like, and it's like, and, and I'm fucking trying to control it and fight it. And I'm like, fuck, man, fuck this. So they get me up and they get me out and they get me into um, the bathroom. So, and I don't, here's the thing. I don't remember them getting me out of the chair and getting me to the bathroom. Like, it's fucking, you know, whatever. And this, it, man, it's the most violent thing I've ever went through mentally and physically in my life. It's crazy. It was shaking loose, Tony. I mean, it was fucking, it was wrecking me. Like, if I had to explain it, man, it's like, uh, imagine a, a million chains on, on, on these walls right here and you're chained to them and you, and you fucking, it says, relax, sit down and chill. And you're like, fuck that. I need to get out of here. And then bam, it fucking knocks you back down. Or if you were drowning and a huge hand just pushing you back down until, until you submit. And I'm in this fucking bathroom, dude. I got, I fucking shit myself. I'm fucking sitting on the toilet. I'm laying there. I'm like, fuck man. And I'm like trying, and then I'm dry heaving too. And all this shit's going on. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I just said, you know, like the, you gave the shaman was out of the room. Yeah. And, and they kept saying, just let it go. Just let it go. Breathe, relax. And I could hear her through the door. And I was just like, fuck it, man. And I just threw the fucking puke thing down. And I didn't puke one time. Hmm. Not one ounce of puke came out of me. It was all dry heave shit. Now I shit myself. So <laughs> that did happen. Just ass. But <laughs> yeah. so, um, you know, I'm fucking sitting there. I just threw it down on the ground and I'm like, fuck it. And I just lay back and I let it go. Fucking greatest feeling I've ever had in my life. It felt like as soon as I let go, 
something took and stripped me to my bone and 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 got and all my ego went away any control that I ever think I had in my life or control of anything and I realized at that moment control is the greatest illusion that we have with ourselves we we, we control nothing and I was so relaxed and was like holy shit I I fucking I laughed at them about mother ayahuasca and mother yeah. A and she's gonna do this and all I was sitting there saying never saw her didn't see it did nothing but I can tell you right now I fucking felt it and all I kept saying was she's beautiful and she gave me what I needed not what I wanted yeah, because that's... my experience that I thought I was going to have was going to be way different. So I'm sitting in here doing this, you know, and all this shit's going on. And I mean, it's violent, man. I mean, all this shit until I let go. And then it went and I was like, holy fuck. And at that moment in time, man, I got all kinds of clarity of so much stuff. Like me thinking I can control everything and like like my attempted suicides and all that stuff. And, 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 and a lot of that, that stuff, that all has to stem back to my control. Because I'm trying to control this, you know? Well, fuck it. I'll, if it's not going to go away, I'll just control it this way. I'm going to... It's the craziest shit that went on inside my brain. Thought I was like, fuck, man. And the clarity and all that stuff. So, you know, I, it, it, you know, I go through it. And then I... Then all of a sudden, when it's, they said, when it's over, it's over. And man, when it was done, it was like... Phew, and left me. And I was like, uh, uh, that's... It. I'm done. And I was like, okay. Didn't have no hangover. My head didn't hurt. None of this shit. The only thing that hurt was the back of my throat the next day from dry heaving. But I was like, you know, I was like, uh, I fucking came out of there, dude. I mean, think about this. You, I'm sitting here coming out telling these people, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. This is the greatest thing in the world. Thank you so much. It was the most, it was the greatest feeling I've ever had in my life. It is the most comfortable, the most relaxed, the best I've ever felt in my life of letting go of all this shit that I've been trying to control my whole life, trying to control my businesses, trying to control the guys that work for me, trying to control. No, I don't have control. I can give direction and hope that they take that direction, but I don't, you know, I can't control a relationship. I can't control how things are going to go. And you know, man, it, it's the craziest shit in the world. And I, I, you got a guy sitting there that just fucking dry heaved as hard as you could uh, fucking dry heave and shit himself. And I'm fucking thank thanking you. everybody. <laughs> I'm like, thank you so much. And it was the greatest thing that I've ever experienced in my life, man. And it gave me so much clarity. And it's funny because, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I feel this way now. Is this how I'm going to keep feeling? Yeah. So, you know, a week later, you know, I could tell you this. This is what's. This is when I really realized, holy shit, man, I'm different. I get up at three thirty in the morning. We got concrete at like four forty-five, and I it's like forty minutes away. And I drive and I go go to the gas station to get a couple of coffees for me and the foreman working the job. And I go in and I don't have my wallet. And I'm like, fuck, I lost my wallet. So the guy, I'm like, man, I'm really sorry. I don't have it, dude. I, you know, I was like, he's like, man, I'm not going to make you throw two coffees away. Just go. And I was like, okay, cool. So I go out to my truck. I call the house. I'm like, hey, is my wallet there? She's like, nope, I don't see it anywhere. Okay. I was like, all right, well, I'll find it, I guess, later. Took the coffee, went to the job site. Didn't even freak out. The only thing that went through my mind was, all right, well, when I get done with this, I'm going to have to call the credit card companies. Yeah. I have to go get a driver's license. No big deal. Or maybe I'll find my wallet. The old me, I'd have sped out of that gas station 120 miles an hour, went straight home, looked for it, wouldn't have believed her. Would have been like, she don't know what the fuck she's doing, and I would have went everywhere else trying to find it. And I didn't. I didn't even freak out. It did not even enter my head and affect me. And I was like, holy fuck. And like four hours later, I go back to the, my office and they were just sitting on my desk. But I didn't kill myself. And I realized at that moment, like, how many times do we kill ourselves in a day for a mistake? Yeah. How many times in, in a day do we sit there and, and we just keep going, where is it? What's going on with it? How? Well, you can't fix it at that time. So why try? 
It's the craziest thing in the world. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll tell you, like, the world's been testing me lately. And, you know, but I just don't let it bother me like it used to. You're just handling them yeah, different. Yeah, everything's <laughs> going to happen the way it's going to happen. You can't control. It's just like, you know, it's like I, I, I uh, you know, you walk down a hallway of a building you can't control who walks by you or who you're going to see in your day. You know, the things that are going to happen and the people that are going to cross paths in your life. Just, and I realized that the things I can control are how I treat people and how I allow people to treat me. Those are the two most important things, I think, to me Strong. that I realize now that I'm like, okay, if you're not giving me what I need and I'm not giving you what you need, then we just don't need to be around each other. You know, and there's no fault of it. No. You know, I'm the guy that used to hold on to everything, though, man, because I'm like, I can fix it. I can do this. And, you know, that's probably grown up, you know, with my dad's drinking. You know, that's a sign of a, a, a alcoholic child that, yep. you know, you, you're a fixer. You, you know, it's always trying to fix something. So, you know, I just don't I'm not trying to fix anything. Listen, man, if you can't act right and can't be around me and do the right things, I don't need to be around. You, you know, and like I said, I used to deal with that stuff with anger. Hmm. And it's crazy because I used to have, I didn't have it until I was in my forties. I had a real bad, I started getting real bad anxiety about uh, claustrophobia. Don't have that now. Doesn't happen. I used to watch a, sh a movie or something and somebody be stuck in a cave or something like that. And I'd be like, <laughs> like just start breathing heavy. Now I watch it and I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's no big deal. They're going to be all right. You know, it's like, you know, there was times where, you know, I've been laying on the couch or something and a freaking blanket be too heavy. And I think I can't breathe. Like I've let so much stuff go hmm. and it's crazy, you know, and you have a lot more peace in your life. Don't yes. You, and so it's a lot easier, you know, I'm just working through stuff, you know, and it's like when somebody starts getting negative or something like that. I mean, I'm owed an astronomical amount of money right now. And it's the end of the year and it's in construction. I mean, it's more money than most people probably make in a lifetime. And I would be freaking out over it. And people are like, how the hell are you dealing with it? I'll get paid eventually. And, you know, and, and you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit here and make all my employees miserable yeah. and, and yell at them and be like, call them today and tell them we want our checks and tell, call this person and yell at What is that going to do? Their life's going to be miserable. It's not going to do anything for us. It's going to yeah. upset those other people. You know, there's so many moving parts that I'm just like, send out an email. If we have to call them, say, hey, can you please give us an update on this? You know, we'd just like to know when we're going to get it. We're trying to, you know, update our cash flow, whatever. I just deal with stuff differently, man. And I was dry. I used to drive. Man, I, I, I was driving. Before this happened, I used to drive around and somebody would speed past me. Or I'd see somebody coming flying up the lane next to me and I'd be like, Pfft get over in front of them just don't <laughs> <laughs> like you're that like, guy <laughs> yeah like and that's and and what's fucked up is is like why was i putting so much energy into all these other people and all these other mm -hmm. things that were going on it's crazy man and like i'll tell you right now it fixed my friend mm, that's cool i mean it's fucking it's just, he's he's just different you know and here's what, what's nuts. and it hasn't like felt meaning like because it was about about a month ago yeah, because I I called you that week, I believe. Yeah. So it's you're like, dude, I gotta tell you some wild shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it hasn't really tailed off, is my um, point. Like, well, it's it's it's, it, it. Well, here's the thing: it's it's tailed off because uh, the thoughts when they rush in, yeah, they're, they're they're thicker. Yeah, you know, before they were, I kind of like felt like they might be deflected a little bit, but they're a little thicker mm -hmm. now because you know I think that you know, um, you know, the calluses are kind of coming, but. You know, you just got to fight them off and say, man, what am I getting mad about this for? You mm. know, just, you know, what's going to, you know, and, and like, you know, I was telling everybody for a while at work, you know, guys, it's not what happens because fucking shit happens. Yeah. It's what we do afterwards that matters, you know, and I really live that now before I would say it. And then, you know, behind closed doors, I'd be like, you motherfuckers just cost me $20,000 and what the fuck is wrong? Yeah, you know, yeah. and I would be so mad about it. And now I'm just like, Why? Why get mad? We, we got to fix it. No matter what's going to happen, it's got to get fixed. It's got to, and it's just, man, <laughs> you know, I, I was talking to Matt Brown. He's like, you fucking sound like a hippie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I, was, yeah. I was talking to him on Saturday. He's like, you sound like some fucking hippie. I said, you can think what you want, man, but I tell people this right now. You have no clue. You, you, you nobody has a clue because it ain't a drug. Yeah. Because there's no drug that has ever 
It's not a drug. It has no, there's no, it's not a high, it, there, it's not a drug. There is no way it's a drug. It's, it's, it's a, it, man, they've been using that thing to heal people. And like, if you read this stuff on it, man, there was a kid there that had been hooked, addicted to heroin that came before. And he doesn't do it anymore. Cured his heroin addiction. And people are sitting here saying, and I think what happens is, is that, you know, your brain starts, you know, your brain thinks it's protecting you when it's actually hurting you from things. Yeah. You know, it's like me having control and always thinking I need to be in control and move this around and do this and do that. You know, that's that's not good for a person to think that way, because when you do that, you change actually how you think about things. You know, you don't go into a situation thinking I need to go into this situation and do the do the best I can or whatever. You go you go into some situations thinking, how can I, you know, uh, make this you know, value me more than, you know, and you get manipulative of things. And like, I realized there were some things I did in my life with business and things like that and stuff where I kind of tried to work an angle. And I'm like, there's no fucking angle, man. There's no fucking shortcuts. There's no angles. Mm -hmm. There's none of that. And it's all like easier for me to see now. And like I said, man, I, I fucking laughed at all of them. She's this. She's going to give you what she you need, not what you want. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, motherfuckers. But it happened. I didn't see her. All I did was feel it. And mm -hmm. I felt her. And I felt something. And it was fucking beautiful, man. And, like, I mean, you're sitting here talking to a dude that, like, you know, I was like, I'm supposed to carry this. You know, I'm a good businessman. Uh, I'm a good power lifter. I'm this, I'm that. And, and dude, it stripped me down to my fucking nothingness on the f fucking lane, fucking, you know, shitting yourself. So, yeah. Nothing stripped to the bones. <clears throat> I got rid of my ego and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, what do you need an ego for? And it's really weird because, like, I have conversations with people now, you know, in business. And we deal with some businesses that, you know, they're kind of like they're bigger and they think they're bullies and they yeah. just start talking to me in a way. And it's so funny because I don't even react to them because <laughs> they're, they're talking to me. And I'm and, and the whole time I'm thinking to myself, you, you're just trying to sit here and and, and impose your will on me. Yeah. And there's no will to impose, man. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And there's the problem happened. You know, what, how do we fix it? And, you know, it's, it's like I had a conversation, you know, yesterday. And I said, well, it's a problem, but the problem's already happened. That doesn't matter now. What do we yeah. do move forward? And the guy was like, okay. Like, <laughs> but he, got, he was on the phone with me at first. It was, you know, poked his chest out and said, what are you guys going to do about this? And how are you going to fix this? And what's going to? Well, yeah, we're going to fix it. Yeah, it happened. It's a mistake. Own it. Move on. Yeah. And the guy just did not know how to. He didn't know how to react. He, he was just, he, I mean, he like got paused for like six seconds of, and I was like, hey, man, you there? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. And on the other, you're on the other line? <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I've seen, uh, and I'm going to go back and do it, man. And like, you know, I'm going to pay for five of my friends to go. That's cool. That want to go and, and actually, you know, maybe go on some journey because that's what it is yeah, yeah yeah it took me on a journey man and it and, and it was as crazy as everybody else was talking about well you know i i went this way and i was looking at this and i was seeing this and then she took me over here and showed me this path and it showed me this and showed me that nah man i went to, i went straight to the darkest <laughs> deepest depths of anything and i tell people this it's the most violent thing i've ever been through in my life Physically and mentally, it's the most violent thing I've ever been through. And it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. The greatest. Like, I mean, here's what's nuts, man. It's like they say that, you know, when you do DMT and stuff like that, that some people, you know, it takes them back to their childbirth. Mm -hmm. Because it unlocks a memory in your brain. I, I could tell you, man, like, I'm like, was I fucking reborn? Did I go back to my birth coming out and seeing these motherfuckers around me? Like, what the? I don't know. But I just know one thing. I'm a different person. I'm way different than I used to be. Hell like yeah. I used to, I used to react on emotion. I used to react on, on, uh, you know, like, well, I should be controlling this situation. You should be doing this. I used to do those things. <clears throat> I mean, of course I run a business. Of course I have to do certain things to keep yeah. my business going and things like that. But other things, man, 
All right, time for questions and comments. Oh, yeah. That was kind of like... Trey, Trey had his hand yeah, up a while ago. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I know, thing, Trey. so I know exactly what you experienced. There's a bunch of research on it, actually. So it's a, it's a thing called ego death. And so there's like a bunch of research. I've oh, read, sick. I've read like multiple books on it. I mean, I've had like... I mean... I mean, not to like say, but I've probably had a lot more psychedelic experiences. Oh, than, yeah, you than, have. Than, <laughs> have like, you um, took 10 of whatever the fuck you yeah, said a little like, while ago. Yeah, so like what, what you experience, like the technical term for it is called like ego death. Like you should look it up. There's a bunch of there's books on it, That's all cool. that kind of stuff that I've read. And so like that is like a thing, though. So it is like you were like essentially like rebirth, like in like a like like your soul of you is like rebirth and stuff like that. So like I that's totally understand wild, like Trey. what you went through and like that's just to give it like a little a little bit more like meaning and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I mean, it's fucking I mean, well, in, it's in, sick. like basically that's so, like, the exact bas- title. So, like, what he bas- explained. So like basically, though, like what Tony went through, though, was like the pinnacle, though, of like a psychedelic experience. It's a great because because so like so with psychedelics like that's not an experience though that people like typically go through though like to go through like a quote unquote ego death takes like a certain amount of it takes a certain mindset a a certain atmosphere you know certain amount of like quantity of it like all that kind of stuff like that so like he hit the the real storm to experience something like that is like to tie it all together like to go like nine to nine in a meet or some shit yeah yeah (laughs) I mean fuck with that track but that sounds exactly what he just explained. Like yeah, that exact exactly title like, sounds. Yeah, I mean, I've yeah. experienced that before too. Well, I, know exact, here's, I know the exact feeling of that. What's crazy <laughs> is I thought it was over. I thought it was done, and I was like laughing, and you know, like. Then she and I remember, the smoke. I, I remember after I took the second cup, and I went back, and I sat down, and I was like, "Let's go, motherfucker!" Like you know, because I was like, "Bring it." Yeah. And then. Yeah, you're going to and a meet. Then, yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I and knew then, it. She I knew and it. then I went out and ate them Doritos and came back and. Fucking, she brought the fucking rain. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And it's crazy because when I came out, the other shaman there, he was like, he was like, are you all right? And I was like, bro, I'm better than I've ever been in my whole life. And 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 I said, I can't believe that 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 this happened. And he's like, man, he's like, you came out of that room, and he said, the look on your face, because they were getting me to the bathroom, the look on your face was fucking he said dude he said you were scared to death and i can tell you that that's the scaredest i've ever been in my life because i because you know it's like here's the thing man it's like you know i did lsd i mean it was i can control it a little bit easier you know what i'm saying if i open my eyes shit wasn't as bad so but you close my i close my eyes i go back to the 70s you know mushrooms is you know i it's you know been intense but it wasn't you know i could i could kind of like talk myself into just relaxing and doing this there was nothing there to fucking calm this down because it was like you're going to get beat down and i'm going to strip you to your fucking bones and you're going to see that you're fucking nothing you're nothing and that's a great fucking feeling to feel nothing to be nothing and that's fucked up that i say that because uh, so, like, you know, I used to say to myself, like, you see people in a bar, and this is not, and I don't want this to sound egotistical or bad or anything, mm. but say you see somebody in a bar, say they're considered obese or overweight to to social standards, or say they have some kind of defect or something, and or whatever, and, you know, they live their best life. They're fucking out there having fun, talking to everybody, outgoing, and they're comfortable in their own skin. And I used to fucking, I used to uh, look at them and I'd admire those people and I would I would be envious of them because I'd be like, man, I, I fucking, I'm fucking, you know, I'm a really good power lifter. I fucking have a good business. I, and I was like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't just, you know, it was, like, hard for me to kind of just be that way. It's not hard for me now. Now I walk up to people, hey, how you doing today? How's things going? You know, and that's what's really crazy, man, is I start seeing the world. And, and like, I would say, I used to say hi to people all the time. Hey, how you doing today? And I used to take it personal. Like, oh, my God, what the fuck's wrong with this person? And then I'd start in my head analyzing them of, like, what's wrong with them? They must be a fucking asshole. I think they're better than me or anything like that. Now I'm like, man, I really feel sorry for them. I really feel sorry that they can't even, you know, you know, say hi to somebody in their daytime and in, in their in their daily life and 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 be okay with it. You know, it's like everybody shies away from it. And I don't have 
I mean, I think I'm a good person. I think I've tried to be a good person, but I've done some really bad things in my life. But um, is there less noise? Is that? Oh, yeah, bit? there's no noise. Because I've talked to some people that have just said, like, it just never stops. Yeah. And it, is, it, yeah, is that so, one of the good things yeah, Tony, so, about? Well, yeah, and that's what's funny, too, is, like, so uh, the suicidal thought thing. Um, it's not, it still happens because mm -hmm. I think my brain's just fucking got a connected wiring that way, but it's not as often. I think I've went a few days at the end of the day and I'm sitting at home and I'm like, holy fuck, I didn't even think about that today. And it's, it's like, so, and I compare it to this is like, you know, if you're in a relationship with a girl and you're in total love with her, you know, whatever and you guys break up that hurt and pain you have, and it lasts for a long yeah. time. And you, you know, every day you wake up, what's she doing? What's going on? What happened? You know, and it's like, you have this wandering about it, you know, um, that was kind of my relationship with the, the thoughts of suicide. But, you know, eventually one day, if, once you're away from that person, you just, one day you just wake up and you don't think about them again. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, fuck, I can breathe. Mm. And you're like, okay, I'm over that. I've never been over the suicide thing until now because now it's like, holy shit. It's like people don't understand, you know, um, it's freeing. Hell yeah. I mean, it's really freeing. I mean, I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm not a hundred percent fixed from it. I'd say 60%. Mm -hmm. So it's way less than what it was before. You know, because when that shit would happen before, I'd be like, why the fuck are you thinking this, man? <laughs> you're driving around in your truck. You did, everything's great. You don't have, you know, so it, it's just, uh, you know, and that's the thing, you know, that like, you know, um, I think that uh, <laughs> I, I, I know how to love. I feel like I know how to love better now, too. Like, I, so, you know, I have a I have an older daughter, man, and. I got three grandkids and she, she, I'm a hard person, man. And she kind of got mixed, mixed up and I helped her as much as I could. And she, she had a drug problem and this and that, but she's been doing really well for the past year and a half, two years. And I still didn't, I couldn't be around her. And, uh, over the past couple of weeks, man, I, uh, I, I, you know, she, she's, she's not working right now, you know, but, uh, she's, she's got three kids and she's living with my parents. Um, I, I, I didn't know how to love my child, you know, cause there was a lot of anger and hurt there and the things that she did and some, some stuff happened. And, um, um, I had to come, she helped me clean the office. Um, she's kind of got, you know, um, I want her to get better with it. She's, you know, she's been around a lot of people that have changed her mentality of things. Is She's kind of street, you know. Mm -hmm. She didn't grow up that way. I mean, I put her in Catholic schools her whole life, so. But um, she just does some things. I guess what I'm getting at is, man, it's like she's come back in my life a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, my grandkids are so uh, five four and Alana is I think a year eight months <clears throat> almost a year and I never had lunch with him and I had lunch with him last week man and it was fucking cool and like I I now um I appreciate it a little bit more man and I I appreciate them kids and I appreciate her and she's got some struggles to go through and it, things that she needs to fix man but it's um I, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think I'd ever try to heal the relationship with her. Yeah. I didn't think I'd ever try to step in because I was just like, you know, I'm not going to do this. I mean, there, it, you know, there, <laughs> there was a point where I asked her one time and she just had the two boys at the time. And I was like, how much money do you want me to give you? And I'll take full custody of them because just the way they were living and I was scared, you know, and I'm just not so scared for the future anymore. And it's, you can't control they, it. Yeah, they ha yeah they have a they have a grandpa if they want to see me and there things like that and it's crazy, man. So I mean, I'll tell you like uh, this stuff is uh it's fucked up, man. But I I 
I got bal- I got a little bit more balance in my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not coming from places of anger with people now. I'm not going to say that, you know, it won't ever happen because, you know, I don't know what my future is going to hold and sure. how my brain's going to try to rewire itself or connect something, but I'm going back and I'm going back to do it again uh, within the next, you know, eight months. So, um, you know, because I want to go back again and I want to see if there's something else there or something else I can go through. But, I mean, I, I do like, I feel like I know how to, It's it's weird, man. I didn't. I didn't, I, I don't think I knew how to love um, uh, as unconditional as you should be able to. And I didn't think I knew how to. And I kind of, I'm kind of getting there now. It's weird. Um, it's amazing, Tony. I don't know if it's weird. I mean, yeah, it's just, it, it's funny because like, you know, we had a meeting with, so my, my tax accountant, my, well, my tax attorney, uh, my bookkeeper and then an accountant, some other people. So they come into the office and usually there's some skewed number or something happens and Tony goes and I get up from the meeting and I just walk out of the room like guys figure it out. And let me know when it's figured out and I'll be back down. You yeah. know, and I go to my office and I let him sit in the conference room and I'm like, hmm. Yeah. And some shit happened. Numbers were way out of whack. And stuff, some stuff got, it was just messed up. Stuff that to- Tony would have lost his shit on. And I looked at it and I was like, well, guys, I was like, what do we need to do to fix this? And every fucking one of them in the room were like. <laughs> <laughs> what did this guy drink so, last month? <laughs> so the, book, the lady that helps with the bookkeeping, she looks at me and goes, who are you? I said, I'm Tony. And she was like are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And you know, it was funny after the meeting was over, she called my buddy who she does his accounting uh, bookkeeping and stuff for too. And told him he's not the same. And I just, that's, that's where I'm at now. So, mm-hmm. I mean, sorry, I keep talking. Over. No, you're good. Yeah, Cole. Good. This is just making me like think a lot. I mean, I don't, yeah, yeah. Just in general, just, yeah, yeah. just in general, you know? So good. Day. I, I think one of the coolest things you've, you've, come back to it multiple times but like just having like better awareness but like it's almost like you're like better able to like zoom out and have this like bird's eye view of like any decision or anything that's going on in your life and you can actually like separate that and not react like right. on yeah. impulse you know like that sounds like it's probably yeah. one of the most profound effects yeah because I, I mean i'm a reactive person i've always been that way i'm not I, I try to be proactive but i'm just not that guy i'm not always being proactive so I'm a reactive person, but now, you know, it's really weird too, man. It's like, I, like I said here, my shoulders don't like, usually I'd be, I feel like I got to sit, like I relax now and I'm just like, cool. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't get into, I don't get into conversations and think I got to, Oh, I'm going to, you know, do any of this with, I don't do that. And it's really weird. Cause people, there's been a few people who have tried me and mm-hmm. done some things. And I'm just like, it's funny because if you don't react to them and you just tell them it diffuses you're, it. you're not you're not being a good person right now that's not that's not how a good person acts yeah and they're like what, what? <laughs> you know and you know there's a company that you know i'm gonna quit doing work for man and i just had a conversation with them and said hey guys listen man i said i used to feel like this was a partnership and 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 you know we we were working towards a common goal but i feel like now that you've got new people in here and things like that and they want to be bullies and and you know don't want to try to work things out here's you know and they're like wait a minute what what, what are you talking about and i'm like i think you got some you know internal issues that you guys need to fix but mm-hmm. i don't want to be around it and i don't need to be and they're like okay and then they call me back two hours later are you sure and i'm like if we want to sit down we can have a i'll have a transparent conversation with everybody there but they lied to me told me certain things were going to be done there was payments that were due you know i put out a bunch of money to pay other subs underneath me you know there was things that happened and and it was just i I, it's it's fun the old me would have been like well you want to know what you did you did this you did that you did this you did that and i did i'm i don't why don't you tell somebody what they did like that i just tell them hey this is how it's going this is how i feel and i'm gonna I'll, i'll just choose to step back yeah Wow. 
Trayvon, you got anything else to add, buddy? No. Good. The other, <clears throat> the other thing I was going to address too that uh, I, I personally related to is the relationship thing. Like when you got a divorce, and like how like when time passed by or you like you worked through it, and then like one day it's like, it seems like it's oh it's okay. Yeah. Now. Like, like that's exactly how I felt because like <clears throat> you're yeah. constantly wondering what they're doing. How the fuck am I going to get through this? It How am I going to find somebody else? Like, all this shit. Yeah, because you, your life's over. It's like you live in that fucking moment every time and every day. And then all of a sudden, one day, at the end of the day, you're like, I didn't think about them. Or you wake up in the morning and you're like, I didn't think about them. And there's like a freedom to that. Hell yeah. Sure. You know, there's a total freedom to that whole thing. And like I said, that's how I equate my relationship with, with suicidal thoughts is that. It's that's what it is. It's, you know, but now it's like I woke up in days and like, holy shit, man, I got really good things going on in my life. Oh, my, you know, oh, wait, wait a minute. You know, it's like and that's and, and that was one of the reasons, too, I wanted to talk about this, man, is because, you know, you know, people can look at people and say, man, he's fine. He's fucking doing great. He's everything. He just do. T- I mean, if, you know, people were like, uh. I remember I was sitting with Matt Brown and Jeremy Loper one time at their house, and they were like, uh, they were talking about something, and I was like, no, oh, I've attempted suicide three times. And they were like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, fucking, and they're like, uh, and Matt's like, dude, I never seen that, you know, out of you. I couldn't even fucking see that. He's like, dude, you're always in control. You always got, no. On the surface. Yeah, on yeah. the surface. Yeah. I mean, it's real easy, man. I mean, I tell you what, buddy, I said, you know, I told him, I said, look, man, I got a real fucking pretty fucking book cover, but God damn, dude, you get in them pages and there's some <laughs> fucked up shit going on. Yeah. And That's a great way to yeah. explain you know, it. And they're just like, oh, okay. And it's really weird. And I, I just want people to understand, man, that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, if you're going through that, man, I, I just want people to know that, you know, like I said, that Dr. Oz thing, man, if you get up and get moving, at least you can cope with it a lot better. Yeah. Dr. Oz and Lady Ayahuasca. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. no. But, Tony, I got to tell you, like, just the honesty all the way down to shitting yourself. Yeah. I mean, unfiltered, unfiltered, (laughs) talking about learning how to love. Like, things that are hard for tough, strong dudes to talk about. Right. But, obviously, all of us are homies. And and you came in here, which is is how you're operating anyway. But, like, one, it's going to impact a lot of people. Two, it obviously impacted us. And it's like just to be able to be that honest about this stuff that's that deep and difficult like you just don't it's tough man yeah so I mean, so i appreciate it yeah I mean, i'm not like i said i'm like matt matt called me a fucking hippie and i'm like, <laughs> bro, I'm like, you have, like that's not how i you know and it's like you know you was talking about the aaron Rodgers thing or whatever and it's like everybody's like oh well he's fucking done lost his mind and his edge well here's the thing man what does it matter to you why does it matter to you? Yeah. If he's done, he can just walk away and say, look, I've won a Super Bowl. I've done this. I've done that. What have you done? Yeah. You know? That's true. I mean, it's like, it's like people want to – it's so funny how people, like, uh, perceive things. You know, it's like, well, he's screwing up my, my fantasy football league. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like – I didn't draft him. I'm like, but <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not on my team. He's not on right. my team. But I'm just saying. I, I no, mean, I get what people you're can, you know, people are gonna, people are gonna, you know, Throw judge rocks. or do whatever. Yeah. And like, yeah, man, yeah. but I don't think it didn't change me. I still, I still go out and work as hard as I work, work, do the things I did, do all that. I still do that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, when people, are gonna, you know, it's like, it's just like anything else. It's like, oh, he he got a divorce, so his life's bad. That's why he's. You know, that's why he's uh, he's screwed up now because he couldn't, you know, he's had to do this. You know, (laughs) I I, I, I just think when, you know, when people are trying to control everything you're doing, I think it really it it really screws a person up. Yeah. You know, it's like getting up every day, going to work. And, you know, it's like Steve Buscemi said in Con Air. He's like, oh, you think I'm crazy? (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe it's crazy that guy works a job for 40 years only to retire and end up in a nursing home hoping he makes it to the bathroom before he shits and pisses himself. Maybe that's crazy to me. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like I said, man, I'm like, now I'm just like, I go through my day and, and what's going to happen is going to happen. 
And if it happens, it's not what happens. It's what we do next, guys. Yeah. You know? So, it's I mean, great. That's great why I'm to at. it, Tony. Hey, appreciate the time, dude. It yeah. was amazing. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny. At Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself. That is Tony fucking Ramos. I right, appreciate you guys. We out. Thanks.